How is your back, all right? <laughs> yeah, the voice sound complaining. <laughs> Half pounder because they fired a solid iron shot, cannonball, weighing 12 pounds. Uh, so, no jails on here, only bilbos, leg irons. One of these things here. If you've done something naughty, kids, you'd be sat down here with your ankle shackled to here, and you could be here for up to 100 days on bread and water. Just like school, is it? <laughs> no, no, no. If you did something a bit more late, a uh, bit, bit worse than being, say, late for work, things like that, you'd be brought here for just 24 hours. You'd be given a bag of rope, and you would have to make your own cat of nine tails. Nine little tails on here, look. 11 o'clock the next morning, take it off under the quarter deck there, you'd be stripped, your shirt off right there, all the crew gathered round to witness the punishment, and you'd be flogged, whipped, with the cat of nine tails on your back. 12 to 48 lashes was quite common. Even 12 lashes would strip the skin from your back. So, of course, they want you back to work afterwards, so they bring you down to the sick bay. That's the sick bay when they're not in action, and the surgeon will treat you. Not much in the way of antiseptic then, though, no germaline or anything. Brown paper soaked in vinegar laid on your back, all rub salt into the wounds. Sting a bit, wouldn't it? The boatswain on here, he was in charge of discipline. He would carry a nice heavy piece of rope like this called a starter. If an officer saw a man not working hard enough, he'd shout to the boatswain, boatswain, start up that man, and he'd whack you around the back of the head with it, or shoulders. But when you woke up, you realised probably should have worked harder, eh? We do have a special offer for mums and dads today, too, for one in the museum shop. Is that a good idea, kids? No. Yeah? No? Yeah. All oh, right, then. Yeah. Youngest lad on here at the Battle of Trafalgar uh, was um, Thomas Twitchett. Uh, the, uh, he was about 12. Uh, on the Neptune, another British ship, they had an eight-year-old. But 12-year-old uh, Tommy, he survived the battle, but he wouldn't have got flogged, he would have got the cane. But not some of us older ones remember from our school days, you know, they used to wrap you over the hand with it there. In the Navy, they'd lay you over the gun like this and slap you on the backside with it. And that was called kissing the gunner's daughter. So would you kiss the gunner's daughter? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Down here, of course, not enough room to swing a cat, is there? That's where that comes from. Uh -huh. And when they took the cat up top, they took it up in a bag. So when you go up there, let the cat out the bag, didn't you? Uh -huh. Have you called anybody a little toe rag? <laughs> anybody? Yeah, you know what I'm talking, you know, yeah. Do you know where it comes from? In the Navy, it came from the heads there at the toilets out there. No toilet paper in those days. A long piece of rope with a frayed end being towed along in the water alongside there. Bring it up, wake the bottom with it, drop it in for the next man. That's the, that's the tow rag. <laughs> this is called a 24 pounder because it fired a solid iron shot weighing 24 pounds. In the Navy, we talked about guns and shot. Cannons and cannonballs are for the army, okay. We don't want to know about them, do we? Mm. So, this gun is run out ready to fire, and it would have a crew of six men, and this is one of our originals. Let's like do the same to that one, sir. Yeah, not quite so original, <laughs> fiberglass. Eleven originals on board. This one we reckon was on here at Trafalgar. Um, 1812, the ship finished its fighting career. Brought it to the harbour, they didn't need 104 guns sitting in harbour, so they used them on other ships. But this one here is a little one. And it would be provided with the gunpowder cartridges by a human chain of 85 men and boys. Pass it around the kids. Get it, then. Uh, and you are my powder <laughs> monster. Oh, dear. Boom. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> <laughs> you are my powder monkeys, OK? Yeah. yeah. It's gunpowder. Have you got a match? <laughs> Thanks. So, right in the top of the gun here, this little hole here leads down to the, there's a vent hole. It's a, uh, so in the, there's a cut out the back of the gun here with the vent hole, the cartridge of gunpowder, the shot, the cannonball, and a, whole, a bit of wadding holding it nice and tightly in together. Because in those days, of course, um, the gun could be rolled, well, in the Navy, of course, the, the gun would roll around. You don't want that falling out before you fire it. So, before the guns, uh, before the gun has fired that, they would uh, prick the cartridge down the vent hole here, spill out some of that coarse gunpowder. They take a powder horn with a little bit of fine powder and put a little bit of that into the pan here, this little, a little dent here. 
The uh, gunners would carry satchels of quills, already impregnated with pear, we'll drop one of those down the vent hole. So, here we've got a, a flint hitting the striker plate, causing a flash in the pan, setting off the quill, setting off the charge, and it all goes bang. We've got a tourniquet down the end, if you're bleeding heavily, tighten that up and stop you bleeding. Wood splinter extractors, catheters and probes for digging around, a scalpel, a surgeon's knife, and there's a musket ball extractor, that long thing there in the middle, that long rod. A little twist at the end and some claws, they try and find where the bullet went in, stick it down inside you and try and drag it out of you. Because the lead's poisonous if they leave Lovely. it in the body. No anaesthetic, remember. Now if you, like poor old Nelson, he had his arm so badly shattered they had to amputate it, they had to cut it off or else he would have died. So here we have a surgeon's knife for cutting around the skin, hopefully leave a flap and sew up afterwards. Saws for taking off arms and legs, and a chisel around the bone and muscle off nice and neatly oh. at the end. Oh. 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 <laughs> You'll be held down by the lob lolly boys, the surgeon's assistants. They put a bit of leather or wood between your teeth to stop you biting your tongue off and do it as quickly as possible. With a bit of luck, you passed out. If they thought you were going to survive afterwards, they'll give you a top of rum or brandy. If not, why waste it, eh? Hey. So, anybody left these behind? No. Some people have got their wings. Some people have got their wings.